So in our discussion about feedback, you and I both really kind of shy away from it a bit, and 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 yet we're kind of in the minority at PS Audio. Not that I mean, there are certainly other companies in our in our field that want to have musical products just like we do, mm -hmm. and we'll focus on that. But what's the limitations? Why wouldn't everybody just kind of copy what we're doing and, and build circuits that have uh, you know, there's just no feedback. Why? Why not? Sure. It's just, it's just um, resistors and capacitors and transistors, right? Yeah, I, I heard a, a great circuit designer tell me one time. Um, he, he said, "Complex circuits are easy. The simple ones are hard, mm -hmm. and the simple ones that perform really well and sound good are, are you know, what the experts really, really do. That's when you know somebody's really, really." Uh, you know, uh, experience at what they're at what they're doing and through listening and measuring. Right. If you can limit the amount of of complexity in in the circuit and uh, and, and and get something that sounds really great, um, you know, it doesn't measure to the point where it is obviously going to um, color the sound. Then then you are you are very experienced. Um, it's it's easier to to make something very complex wrap have a lot of non-linearity, wrap a bunch of feedback around it, get low numbers, and, and call it a day, especially with ICs. Yeah. And they can be done, ICs can be done really well. Unfortunately, with their bandwidths and slew rates on some of them, um, some designers mess up, and, and because they're so fast, because they have such high bandwidth, um, they can actually sound bad just based on even the layout itself. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they can kind of become a double-edged sword on you. But um, but anyways, it, to to be able to make a circuit like what we're talking about, yeah, something that is very linear, that hasn't doesn't have any global feedback, it uses localized feedback, is going to is going to require a few things. It's going to require um, fairly high uh, bias points on your on your devices, which means which means the devices are going to have to be. Uh, fairly, uh, you know, large to dissipate that that power. They're gonna have. They're they're gonna make heat. They're gonna make heat. They're gonna they they're gonna have to dissipate that heat. Um, also, you're gonna have to run higher voltage rails. One of the advantages about uh, with globalized feedback is that you can minimize your rails, mm -hmm. and literally the correction will will continue to correct up until clipping, which is called hard clipping, where you have almost. Uh, uh, you have a very, very low uh, uh, number, a distortion number, and then all of a sudden you have a, you have like a vertical line yeah. going up, and you'll see that on amplifiers. That's and, actually, and just to be helpful, rails. Uh, when you talk about rails, you're talking about the power supply voltage. That's right. Yeah. yeah so, well, so you usually just have to work through some of the. Yeah, a lot sorry of people about don't this. know our, our nerd talk. You yep, know? yep. <laughs> um, so, if you're running no global you're gonna want higher uh, voltage rails. Um, this is to increase linearity. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not that we're intentionally trying to create distortion, we're actually trying to minimize it. We're just not using globalized feedback to do so, okay? So from there, there, there are some other problems. Um, you, you, you also wanna limit the amount of input capacitance on all the devices. Mm. So uh, this is because at high frequency, uh, the devices driving them are going to start seeing a lower impedance. Mm -hmm. This is going to cause distortion at high frequency um, uh, intermodulation distortion, mm -hmm. which is not good, okay? No, that's worse um, than harmonic distortion that's sonically. Right. Yes, that's yeah. right. Back in the day, this was heavily investigated uh, uh, with uh, in feedback theory because of um, something called SID, mm -hmm. rate induced, slew rate induced distortion. distortion uh -huh. Yeah. But it's no longer an issue. Um, we, we don't even really discuss it anymore because uh, modern op amps don't have these problems at all. Um, but this is what I found, um, is that still the input capacitance of, of devices uh, is, is really important. And it's important for that capacitance to be fairly linear. The capacitances can be uh, fairly non-linear in a lot of devices. And at high frequencies, like getting to 20 kilohertz, um, it can start to act um, odd on you, and you can start having even rising distortion in your circuit, even with no 
globalized feedback. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to see is I want to see feedback or, or I want to see distortion versus frequency graphs that are, are pretty consistent. They don't change much versus frequency. That shows that the amplifier is operating really well at high frequency. Um, a lot of a lot of amplifiers that have um, uh, globalized feedback are non are nonlinear. They start to show their nonlinearity at at high high uh, um, uh, frequency uh, areas. Um, the, the reason what this what you're seeing there when you see the distortion versus frequency graph and the distortion starting to go up mm -hmm. at at high frequency and this is usually with power amplifiers is that you're seeing the onset of of slew rate induced distortion you're seeing the onset of it mm -hmm. but it's considered that it's basically not there because it's it's so benign it's so in, uh, innocuous but but it's it's still you're seeing the onset. You know, maybe maybe if you were to push that amplifier at at 300 kilohertz, that now you're seeing at a really really high voltage, you would start to see the the actual slewing, uh, slew, slew limiting. But um, but that that's basically what you're seeing. So if you have more open loop uh, gain that is consistent across the band. And then you apply globalized around that. You're going to see a more consistent, sure. and you're, you're not going to see the rise. It's, it's, you, you make a better sounding amplifier, or better performing amplifier without feedback. And then when you wrap some around, yeah. it's not so bad. Yeah, which is when we do uh, yeah. use feedback, that's what uh, we do. Yeah. But a number of circuits don't even operate open loop. If you pull the if you pull the the feedback loop yeah. off, they go into saturation and, and, and stop. Yeah. That's if they don't yeah, you you actually can run some op amps open loop. Yeah. Um, maybe we should talk about that another time. Yeah. But um but but either way, the the uh, linearity is is really important. And some devices are of course more linear than others. Yep. Okay. Um, tubes are are some tubes are very linear. Yep. Okay, how do you how do you know this? Look at their load line graphs on their data sheets and look how straight their lines are. Yep. Okay? These these devices are linear. And they may not be good at all for high feedback designs because of some some issues that I won't get into here, but uh, but open loop, they 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 actually produce pretty pretty low distortion sure. when you when you do it right and again you have look you have localized feedback which is awesome mm -hmm. you can tie localized feedback in and actually reduce the amount of distortion and control the gain of the device mm -hmm. okay but now you have very wide bandwidth you don't have any globalized system um, you have the ability to um, to mold that circuit and use all sorts of different topologies where the globalized system kind of takes a lot of stuff out of the picture which again is great yeah and i'm not i'm not against those who use it it's just that yeah. um i want to i want to dance i want to have fun and and that's not always what what does it for me got it all right thank you David. all right okay thanks